What food has made you wonder, how did our ancestors discover that this was edible? Cashew nuts. The shell is poisonous, the oil from the shell is poisonous, the nut is okay. If you pick one, shell it and eat it you will get a poison ivy type reaction everywhere it touched you. Potatoes, the leaves are poisonous, the weird bubbly shit on the roots is fine, but only if you cook them. Wild potatoes can make you quite sick eaten raw. Gyromitra esculenta not only does eating this raw will kill you, boiling it once will also kill you, but if you boil it twice, you can eat it who thought that this mushroom was edible after the first or second guy had a painful death. Who saw spiky ass sea urchins and decided to try them out? Thousands of years ago, everyone in Japan was just like yeah it's in the ocean, it's fair game. Yogurt. Hey man, this is pretty good. What is it? Don't worry about it. Conversation 2000 years ago. Yogurt. We're desperate. Just eat it. Artichoke. Let's take that spiky ass weed that makes your hands taste bitter for days and boil it for an hour or two so we can scrape a tiny bit if nothing off the leaves with our teeth. How hungry was that dude? Edit, to be clear, I love artichokes. And they do not require butter or mayo to be delicious. I was at a business lunch as a grown-ass man in my 40s, having never eaten artichoke, and the other guy orders a grilled one as an appetizer. Five minutes later I'm still chewing on my first leaf trying not to show the why do people eat this. Face, when I notice him scraping the leaf with his teeth. That information would have been very valuable ahead of time. I made artichokes a while back, my old roommate, in his 30s, had never had them and wanted to try. I'm chowing down on them loving the new recipe I had tried, he asks me, are they supposed to be this tough? Much like you, he was chewing the leaves rather than scraping the flesh. This is when I realize I've only ever eaten artichokes that have been canned, in glass containers. I don't think I've ever seen what they really look like, at least not in person. Artichoke hearts are the cheat code for this otherwise messy food item. The answer is always grains. I can't figure out how our ancestors discovered that prehistoric varieties of wheat or barley were edible. So strumming you know, the Swedish fish that is put underground to rot. Urk it was invented accidentally, salt used to be pretty expensive so some traders didn't use enough to preserve the fish properly, but sold it anyway. When they came back they were surprised when the townsfolk asked as they had any more of the fish prepared in that way. But why would somebody eat it? I mean the way it smells is terrible. Starving people don't have much choice, I'd imagine it's the same way cheese was discovered. We Swedes were desperate for a tradition so we ate old fish. Ha ha ha, sounds like something one of my old uncles would say to mess with the kids. Cheese. Who was like I'm gonna eat the solidified part of this bad milk? And the process to make cheese is so complicated I can't figure out how it was discovered in the first place. It's really not that complicated if you understand how we used to preserve food before refrigerators, or sedentary society. You boil it, salt it, and pour it in a container that's portable, which in this case was probably the lining of a goat ancestor's stomach. Someone did that to expired milk and a somewhat edible goop came out. Then we spent 10,000 more years perfecting it and now it's goddamn delicious. The storage was the key. Using th stomachs of sheep, cows etc., there was rennet in the stomach which helps to make the harder cheeses. Also, sometimes you're starving and only have off milk. Surely there must be a beverage of some sort as well. Perhaps the spoiled juice from those grapes will suffice? Oh we had blonde as a precursor to wine and mead. It was an alcoholic milk-based drink. It was so bad they stopped making it as soon as they found mead and never made it again. Unless you're Dothraki or Mongolian, but I repeat myself. Hurl. It's made from sharks which usually are not edible. Erk that's because they lack kidneys bladders, so all the nasty stuff accumulates instead of getting flushed out. Do your own research though, if you want to know for sure. As a matter of fact, however, it can't be eaten unless you, gut and decapacitated bury it place stones on top to squish the shark and press the nasty stuff out leave it alone for 1-3 to three months dig out the corpse and cut it into stripes air the stripes for another 3-4 to four months remove the brown crust sounds delicious, huh? I dunno, I can imagine how that could happen. Hey Bjorn, I caught this shark. Odin's cockwave, that thing smells like piss. Bury it or something. 
Yeesh. Later that winter Freya's tits, I'm starving. Are we completely out of food? Well, there's that nasty poison garbage shark Leif buried a while back. Guess we could dig it up and give it a shot. Worst case, we die of moldy shark poisoning, I guess. Hand me a shovel and a fork, Eric. What I don't understand is how rotting piss shark jerky went from a food of last resort to a delicacy. Worst case, we die of moldy shark poisoning, I guess. Hand me a shovel and a fork, Eric. By Loki's balls, BJRN, this shit still smells awful. We're still alive though, so I guess we should stick to it and air it out a bit longer. Agreed, Eric. Here, have some bread even, your breath smells like ass. Skull. You know what, at least it tastes better than it smells. Skull. And the Brennan washes the taste away and gets us drunk. Know what, we could make this a tradition. Mother Nature did not count on us actually enjoying suffering somewhere in the nightshade family of plants neighborhood. Solanaceae chili pepper, behold you bastard animals, I give to you my most devilish invention yet. Capsaicin. Mahaha your eyes will water, your tongue will burn, you will pant and struggle with your mouth on fire you will never eat us again. We have declared war on you with bioweapons of pain homo sapiens 1, hey og, this plant burn face homo sapiens 2, me try makes funny panting noises and holds mouth in o shape homo sapiens 1, lol. We grow this and put it in food every day. Homo sapiens 2, lol. Chili pepper, what the duck? Homo sapiens down the line, let's breed this to concentrate the capsaicin at truly obscene levels that would never be found in nature, and then have competitions to see if we can eat it without dying. Chili pepper, whatever dudes, at this point, all I can say is, do you, boo. The chili pepper got the sweet end of the deal. Guaranteed comfy lifestyle and no shortage of reproductive opportunities. Durian. Let's take this spiky ass fruit that smells like shit and crack it open, see some yellow gooey shit and start eating it. It smells rotten, it's the consistency of boogers, it tastes. Okay I guess, and an hour after you eat it you start belching up sickening burps. You start belching up sickening burps. This is why I think it's the worst ducking thing I've ever eaten. I've had all kinds of weird shit, from canned higgies to fermented fish, but the never-ending durian taste of why burps is the one I regretted most. Fucking vile stuff. Ever been near someone who ate half a durian alone? Within two hours he was sweating it out. Had to leave. Imagine the morning after for a durian and rum binge. Ass. Smells like ass correct. The face that poor man made, I died a little inside for him. Civic coffee. Although more of a recent discovery, 18th century. But who in their right mind decided, I'm going to make coffee with this animal's poop? I'm surprised I see no mention of coffee in general. How on earth did people figure out to pick the berries, ferment them, dry them, roast them, grind them, put that into boiling water, filter it out again, and drink the fluid? Arabian herders saw their goats eating coffee berries and acting energized afterwards. People began eating the berries. It took a long time before they learned to just boil the bean. I believe this is the accurate coffee origin story. The Arabian herders were Ethiopians. That explains why Ethiopians love coffee. As a person whose parents are both Ethiopian, I can indeed say that we love coffee. Edit, honestly surprised and humbled by all of the people asking questions about my culture and people recalling when they had Ethiopian food. I'm a 17-year-old who lives in a small town in the heart of Pennsylvania, so I don't get to talk about Ethiopian food a lot, it's all about McDisease here lol. So yeah, I appreciate all of the comments. Thank you, and have a Merry Christmas. Wild bitter almonds have a significant amount of cyanide in them. Whatever tribe in the Middle East that decided to keep breeding them and eating them anyway until they cultivated a non-poisonous cultivar was brave as hell. Or desperate. It's great that almonds were domesticated and became full of happiness. Century eggs. Take duck eggs. Wrap them in hay and mud and ashes, Legend has it horse urine used to be used too, because it's alkaline. Wait a few weeks months. Break them open whereupon they are grey and jelly-like and pungent smelling slightly of ammonia. Boil and eat. I love them, but I really have to wonder who thought that eating them was a good idea in the first place. Or perhaps, how hungry they were that eating them seemed like a good idea. 
They might have just forgotten the egg and one day they were so desesperate for food they remembered about that egg and said duck it. That's the story of Worcestershire sauce. Some dude had a barrel of stuff that didn't taste so good at first, so he just forgot about it for a year or two, or more. And went back to try it again and was like oh damn, this is fire now. While Lee and Pims claims that, it's more of a humble brag of the original sauce was too powerful so we had to let it dilute so you could handle it. The reality is Worcestershire sauce is a pretty direct descendant of Garum, they knew what they were doing. Parents bro, parents.